Hi everyone, Janie here. Welcome back to my garden. It is a gorgeous, hot day here in Northern California. I was up early uh, so I could get all my garden chores done and I finished all of those and now I am on to a fun project that has to do with gardening but is not exactly gardening. It's more woodworking and that is building one of these guys right here. This is called a garden to tour or you can call it a pyramid or an obelisk, I don't know, or even a trellis. A to tour is a French word for trainer um, and I like the word to tour. I think it's fancy, so <laughs> I always call it my tutor. I actually handmade this one and I made it out of scrap wood left over from our pergola project. When the gentlemen came here and they installed our pergola in our backyard, they had a bunch of scrap wood left over that they were just gonna trash because it was specifically for our project. I asked them if I could keep it and I took that and I made this with it. So I'm really excited. You know, it's not professional. I'm, I don't know what I'm doing. I kind of just play around, but this is not a structural thing. This is nothing, you know, it's just fun. It's just decoration in the garden and I love it. I think it adds to my garden so much and I think it's exactly what this kind of shady dark spot needed was this bright pop of white, so I love it. So a lot of you have been asking in the comment section how I made that, so I'm gonna show you today kind of how I made that, you know, I want to emphasize that I'm not a professional. Um, I did get a lot of directions from this one blog post called She Holds Dearly. So I will link that below. Um, and then, you know, it really was just a matter of finding what worked for you in your space and how you wanted it to look. I'm gonna make this tutor today, I'm actually gonna make it for my parents, for my mother. She has a garden bed in her new yard, so they just moved in a couple years ago and they just got landscaping in this past uh, winter. And you know when you put new landscaping in, it doesn't always work, you know? You kinda have to change it and see how things do. And she has this one small little garden bed right by her master bathroom that she absolutely loves and things aren't growing very well in there. So I asked her if I could help her redo it and she said, yes, of course. And then she asked me if I could make her one of these garden tutors. And I said, all right, fine. I'm a little nervous about it because my parents like things done just so. So I have to try really hard to do a really good job with this tutor and I want to do it for, it for my parents. So like I said, I got the materials from my tutor just from leftover over scrap wood um, you know uh, it was it was good wood it was cedar wood from my pergola so I know that it's gonna last for quite a long time I did seal it and everything like that um, what I'm going to purchase from what I'm hoping to purchase from the big box store when I go in just a little bit is I'm hoping to purchase some redwood my father made my mom raised garden beds in her little garden area and he made them out of redwood and then stained them this beautiful color and my place is is to try and match that so when we go to the big box store I'm gonna to go to Home Depot and I'll bring you guys with me I want to try and find some redwood two by twos which is mostly what it's made of this is made of right here and then see if I can find a redwood finial I, I've looked kind of online to see what my local Home Depot has and I think that they have what I need so I'll kind of show you guys where um, you can grab it from the store you do need some tools for this project. You could probably do it if you just go to Home Depot in the back and pay them 50 cents to cut the wood for you. Um, but it's a lot easier if you have a miter saw and even a compound miter saw is even better. Um, I actually am going to splurge and I'm going to per per uh, plan to purchase a nail gun for this project, which I've never used before, but I figure now's the time to invest in a nail gun and they're not that expensive. But in these cross members right here, these little squares right here, they are mitered at 45 degrees and I put them together. And how I put them together is I just did a screw into one side. And apparently that is not correct. That's not the way that you join two four by four two 45 degrees together. You want to do something else like a nail gun or uh, wood glue or something that's going to get make it a little more sturdy. Now I say that and I have this and it's working perfectly well. So I don't think it's a big deal at all um, just to do a screw to connect those two pieces. Uh, but I want to try and do it 
correctly for my parents. You know, it's one thing to not do it correctly in your own yard. It's another thing uh, to not do it correctly when you're, when you're gifting it to somebody. So that is another tool that I'm planning to use. So yes, you do need some tools for this project. So it's not a total simple DIY project, but I think you can kind of get inspiration from it and adapt it to have the tools, to, to use the tools that you already do have. All right, so let's get everything together and let's go to Home Depot. All right, everyone, I thought it would just be easier if I did a voiceover so I didn't embarrass myself while in the Home Depot. So first off, of course, I had to go to the nursery. I had to check out and see what they had. And the interesting thing is they had a ton of proven winners plants, but they had a perennial sign next to these proven winners plants. And I don't know if that's just because I live in zone 9B and a lot of these will last. Um, I've just never seen them labeled as perennials. So I don't know if it was a mistake or not, but it was interesting and all the colors were beautiful. All right, now on to our task at hand. So the first thing I found were these two by two furring strips, not that, that's a one by two, but right above it, here's two by two eight foot strips and they're 396 each. And this would be the cheaper option to choose. Um, obviously those wouldn't last as long and they weren't as smooth as these redwood two by twos that I saw here, um, but they are cheap and they would work I think perfectly well, especially if you painted and then sealed. So back here in the nicer wood area, I found um, they're actually one by three eighths, which is you know close enough to a two by two. The wood measurements are never exactly two by two. So this one was perfect and it was nice and smooth and the redwood was absolutely beautiful and I knew my parents would love this. So I grabbed seven of these and then right on the end of that aisle, there were these stairs, these like deck steering sections deck stairs section and that's where I found what they called post tops and this is what I used for my to tour in my backyard um, it's just the five dollar ball but I decided to do this one for my mom because they have more of like a craftsman style house so I thought that this one even though it's a little bit more expensive I thought that it would match a little bit better with her house and then there's this uh, post top that um, this one was kind of messed up, so I grabbed another one uh, that I'm going to put underneath, and it just kind of finishes. It just kind of brings um, brings it up to the finial at the top, and it just looks a lot nicer, I think. So a little, little bit extra, but I think totally worth it, and you guys can see I'm trying to show you right there what my plans are. So I grabbed those, oh, here I'm showing you <laughs> what I used last time for mine in my backyard. So I'm grabbing those two things and then I went to the fence section and I found some redwood fence posts. And this is what I'm gonna use for kind of like um, the flat top. I'm just gonna cut it into a square and it's simply because I didn't have any other options of just square pieces. So these are all my materials, including my splurge nail gun tool, which I'm very excited about. So that's all the stuff that I got and I'm on my way home. Now I did have these construction screws already. You can see we have a giant box of it, so I didn't want to purchase those. But you guys, if you don't have screws, you'll ha probably have to purchase those. And then I got wood glue right there. So for the materials, I got seven of these two by twos. I've got one of these posts, and this one I accidentally got a little too wide. This is a seven and a half inch wide. You only need five and a half inch wide. And then I got this post top with the other post top to put on top of it. So that's the wood material you need for this project. Then in addition to that, the wood glue and the screws, and I'm gonna show you guys, I got the two and a half inch screws. This is just what we had before. I would say go somewhere around two and a half inch um, just so that you can make sure that it goes in deep enough but I don't think you have to get the same exact screws that I got just get what you have and then of course here's the wood glue and this is the main thing that's gonna hold the cross members together and then my brad nailers just kind of secure them while the wood glue cures and that always surprised me with uh, wood projects is that the wood glue does such a good job and then the nails and the screws sometimes just hold things together so the wood wood glue can cure it so then finally i have this compound miter saw um, and uh, i'm showing you right here how to change the bevel and this is the first thing that you want to do for this project is you want to change the bevel to a seven degree so you loosen this 
bevel screw, if that's the right word, and then you turn it to a 7 degree angle right there, and then you tighten it back up. And that's just going to match everything together a little bit nicer. All of this stuff will be the, in the instructions below. Um, then you have to loosen up this fence, um, I think it's called a fence strip, um, and then I'm going to change the miter angle. And that as well for the legs, I'm going to change it to a 7 degrees. So it's a 7 degree bevel and a 7 degree miter, and that's how I'm going to start off. Then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to plug my miter saw in, safety first, and then after this I'm going to put on my safety goggles. Of course. There you go. <laughs> So starting off with the tutor legs, I think the most important thing to remember for the legs are that the cuts, you want them to be parallel. So you can see I just made a cut there and then I measured to seven feet and then without turning the leg at all, I just slid it down and then I made my second cut. You'll see it again right here. I cut, I measure to seven feet because I want this one to be seven feet tall and you can see I have not turned it once I've kept it exactly the same and then I just slide it down and then I make another cut right there and that is how you're going to get the legs to stand how you need them to be so Unfortunately, I didn't get a shot of doing the cross members, the little square pieces that go horizontally, because that is the opposite of this. For those, instead of the cuts being parallel, you want the cuts to be opposite from each other. So when you do that, you want to actually turn it twice towards you or turn it 180 degrees, and that will get the cuts opposite to each other, both long ends on one side, both short ends on the other side, as compared to the legs where you want the cuts parallel to each other. I hope that makes sense to you guys. Okay, so on to said cross members. Now I'm changing the miter from seven degrees to 45 degrees. And then I'm gonna cut a bunch of pieces to make three big squares, and they all have that seven degree bevel. So they all fit together like a puzzle, and you wanna make sure that the bevels match so that as you slide this square down over your tutor, it's butting up right against the legs. Finally, I have the top plate, this I have to do. So now my miter saw is not a sliding miter saw and this fence was just a little bit too wide. So you guys saw how I lifted it up so that the saw, my saw that does not have an extending arm, it could cut through the whole thing. That only works to give you a couple extra inches. Watch what I'm doing right here. I lifted it up and then that will allow you to cut through the whole thing as opposed to flipping it around and trying to match it side to side. All right, so here's where I get to play with my new toy. I fit together the cross members and I fit them together so that the bevels were equal. I put the glue on, which is the main thing that's gonna hold them together. And then I took my brad nailer and I just nailed them together. Um, and so I just tried to be as perfect as I could. It's a little bit tough when you have the bevel because you can see I was trying to get the angle perfect um, so that the ends would match up with each other. And that was, you know, it probably would have been easier if I had some clamps or something something like that, but I just don't have that kind of stuff right now. Maybe that'll be my next toy that I purchase. So I just connected all of these together, trying to do as best I can using the wood on both ends and then securing it. All right, we're almost done, I promise. <laughs> so for the top plate, I'm gonna find the center by making an X connecting the two corners, and then I'm gonna go one and a half inches out from the center, and I'm gonna kind of make a grid pattern where I have four squares, and then that way I know where I need to put my legs, I, need, I know where I need to screw the legs in, and then I know where the center is where I can put that finial on top. So here's where I kind of started getting myself confused. I attached that top piece, first and then I thought oh that doesn't make sense 
so you can see that there's some glue on it. I pre-drilled my screws and then I tried to get my legs on and this is the hardest part I think of the whole project. Because those legs are mitered and beveled, it's really hard to hold the first two in the right spot. So what I did is I kind of screwed it in about three quarters of the way and then I would turn it until it was at the right angle because you want them to be angled out as opposed to angled the opposite way. So the like I said, the first two were absolutely the hardest and then one once I accomplished that and somehow finagled them on and got them on, I was able to put it upright and then I could get it on a ladder and I could screw it in from up top. So I think if you had an extra pair of hands, it would make it a lot easier than how I did it. But, you know, I wanted to show this to you guys to see, so you guys could see that, you know, it's, it's not pretty. It's not a pretty sight. Um, I'm not a professional. I'm just playing around and I'm sure that there's an easier and a better way to do everything thing I did but that's just how I figured it out so you can see I put them uh, straight up and then I could climb up the ladder that third one is not connected at all it's just staying there because of gravity um, and then I just screwed it in and then I also did the same thing for the fourth leg Okay, so now I'm using this bucket and this piece of scrap wood just to hold up this cross member. You can see that square cross member and I'm pre-drilling my holes so that I don't split the wood. So you don't wanna just um, hammer a nail in or hammer a screw into a piece of wood, especially one as thin as this, because you could definitely split it. So you want to first pre-drill a pilot hole and then you can um, drill in your screw. I tried to use my brad nailer for to put these cross members up, but the nails I had were not deep enough to go through enough of the wood. Um, so I had to use a screw, which I think was perfectly fine. So you can see I first pre-drilled my pilot holes, then I'm taking out my drill bit and I'm putting in my other drill bit, I'm not sure what you call it, and then I'm screwing in um, all the cross members using the level just to make sure they're as level as they could possibly be. And by beveling, by putting that seven degree bevel, which matched the seven degree bevel of the legs, it butted up perfectly. And so it matched absolutely perfect. And this was not the same for the tutor that I had in my backyard where I didn't do a bevel and it was really hard and I definitely had gaps. So I'm putting up that, that top, uh, top post, fence post, and then finally screwing on my finial, and phew, I am done. <laughs> All right, everyone, I am done. I am hot and sweaty and tired and hungry, but I am done. Really, it only ended up taking me a couple hours, but of course that's because I've done this project before. Um, I just kind of uh, improved on it a little bit, and I actually think I did a really good job improving on it. I think that um, it's a lot more clean and <laughs> it looks a lot nicer than the first one that I did in my backyard. Um, so again, I wanna emphasize to you guys that I'm not a professional, this is just a DIY fun project so if I did things a little bit off it's just because this is how this is how I know how to do it and these are the tools that I do have um, of course there's ways to do this a lot easier you know you don't have to have the mitered edges you can just do um, butt joints where you know one end goes up to the next and then that would make the, the cuts easier for you guys so this is you know really good inspiration just to see what you can do once you start messing around I will put the cost of this particular tutor with the redwood right here how much this one cost for my parents um, and then if I chose all the cheapest materials that I could find at Home Depot today I will put the cost of what what the materials would cost for that one and then again my tutor that I have in my backyard that was all scrap wood and the only thing I paid for was the finial which was about five bucks so it just kind of depends on what you have what you have access to and what you're willing to spend but it's a really fun project and I think it looks so beautiful in the garden I still need to stain this my dad again my dad uh, 
used redwood for his raised beds that he made for my mom and he used a particular color stain. Um, so I wanna have this match with those raised beds. I think that that will look so gorgeous. So I have to find that particular stain color, but I think it's looking really gorgeous right now, even unstained, but I'm definitely gonna stain it. So I hope you all enjoyed this. It was just a fun little project. Sorry about the car noise. Um, it was just a fun little project. It's a fun thing to do in the garden and it's kind of fun just to like um, spread your wings and see what you can do with woodworking and stuff like that. It's fun to learn different things and it was fun for me to learn the new toy and now I'm kind of thinking what other projects I could do with that Brad Nailer. So anyway, if you guys want to see more videos like this and gardening videos, please consider subscribing and I hope you all have a chance to get into your garden today.